You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, welcome to a to the Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast. We're so glad that you're tuning in no matter what time of day it is. We are, let me pray real quick. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the just learning about the kingdom of God, participating, functioning in the kingdom of God, being a participant in the kingdom of God, a resident. We thank you, Lord, for this revelation that you've given our pastor about, about this book, and we're so excited about the book. We know it's going to change lives, Lord God, and we just thank you for the anointing here right now, and we just love you. We praise you, Father God. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yes, we are continuing the kingdom of God. I'm uh, still in chapter 1. We started talking about the kingdom of conscience. So just a little bit of recap from last week. Uh, In order to function in the kingdom of God properly, you have to develop your conscience, your inner man, your spirit. uh, your, Your spirit talks to the Holy Spirit, communicates with the Holy Spirit, and is led by the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 3 in the Amplified, Jesus answered him saying, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified. We've talked about that. He cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. So again, we cannot experience or function in the kingdom of God unless we are born again. We talked about that last week. We also talked about how to develop your conscience. Um, you, your conscience is, is that, that inward voice, your spirit that Uh, tells you right from wrong, not just right from wrong, but leads you, guides you in the right way, you know, not to bring you harm, but to do, to do good for you. Um, And, and the way that's done is your spirit learns to listen to the Holy Spirit. And in Romans 9, 1 in the Amplified, it says, I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me, enlightened and prompted by the Holy Spirit. So your conscience will lead you. It will guide you through the promptings and enlightenments or revelations of the Holy Spirit in you because you are born again. Because once you're born again, the Holy Ghost is deposited in you. Um, This is one way that the Holy Ghost leads us and guides us. Without the development of your conscience, it is going to be really hard to function in the kingdom of God successfully because one of the priorities is to seek first the kingdom of God. And how do you do that unless you have a developed conscience? It takes some time, but the more word that you get in you, the more your conscience is developed, the more your conscience, the voice of your spirit will direct you through your partnership with the Holy Ghost. And we talked about those little promptings, those little, you know, should I, shouldn't I, you know, I I really think I should do this instead, or maybe I shouldn't do this. That's your conscience. Those are those little promptings that, you know, we, we say don't ignore those, no matter how silly they may seem. And sometimes they do seem a little silly, but that's the Holy Ghost. And it's always worth listening to that little prompting, that little voice, because if you don't, it may not go so well (laughs) um, but anyway uh, also knowing the Word of God what does the Word of God say about your current situation Uh, you know developing your conscience has you have to know the Word of God you have to study the Word of God so that you know that when you are in a situation you don't know what to do about it the Word of God will tell you what to do about it Um, so that's basically in a nutshell what we talked about now we're we're still talking about the kingdom of conscience we're going to get into um a little bit more here we're going to start with first timothy 1 18 through 19 this is paul talking this charge or command i commit deposit and entrust into thee son timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. What verse 19 is saying here is when you ignore your conscience, you shipwreck your faith. That's, that's a tragedy right there too. When you ignore your conscience, when you ignore that, that, that voice, um, you shipwreck your faith. Notice that 
uh, Paul said here, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies. He's talking about a realm where prophecy flows out of the believer's spirit. And this is a very serious charge or command because it, 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 it is said that in reference to war or warfare, our faith is becoming shipwrecked. Spiritually speaking, this is like a matter of life and death. The word charge means to proclaim, to command. It comes from the proclamation or decree of a commanding officer in the military. Uh, in order to keep the men under the command of the commanding officer alive and pushing towards victory. The word commit is a banking term. It means to entrust. It means to deposit. And the idea is entrusting something to someone for safekeeping, to commit to another with confidence. This is a serious deposit. Paul was basically saying, if you keep what I am telling you in the forefront of your heart and mind, all of your struggles will be successful. You'll come out victorious, right? And your ministry will be sure and profitable. For those who are in the ministry, you want a sure and profitable ministry. Your service and your name will outlast your critics and the opponents of your faith. That's awesome. He said, according to the prophecies which went before thee, before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Now, why is this so important? Um, because the things we experience in this world are always trying to rob us and to get us to abandon what God has called us to do. You know, uh, the enemy with his cohorts, with, with uh, his uh, demonic entities, and we'll get into demonic entities and all the, the spirits that, that try to pull you away from God, but that's, that's the enemy's mission. He wants to get you away from what God has called you to do. He wants to wear you out. He wants to put you in a situation that you think is hopeless. He wants to exhaust you. Why? Because he wants you to give up and walk away from the things of God. He wants your faith shipwrecked. There is an unseen battle going on here. It's an opponent that can't be seen causing trouble um, and disrupting people's lives. That's the enemy. Don't let him shipwreck your faith. We must understand how important it is that our conscience is fully developed and our spirit is fully strengthened. Uh, was it in the proverb in Proverbs? It says, uh, um, "A weak and broken spirit, who can bear? It is the strong spirit of a man that sustains him through infirmities, but a weak and wounded spirit, who can bear?" I'm paraphrasing because I think I'm mashing up like the King James and the Amplified, but our spirit must be fully strengthened, amen, so that we can do what God has called us to do because our faith and our conscience work together. The enemy, sooner or later, will attempt to come after you. It, he doesn't want you to get saved, much less operate successfully in the kingdom of God. So he will come after you. I can't tell you how many times, there, and there are, everybody in this church can testify how many times the enemy has come against them, tried to come against them, get them away from, <clears throat> from, from not just the church, but get them away from serving. Um, it's, it's inevitable. The, the second that you make the decision to serve God, just be ready for battle. And when, when Paul says to Timothy, you know, that by the prophecies that were spoken to you, you might war a good warfare, you know, never forget what the word of God says, whether there was a prophecy given to you about your your future ministry, uh, whatever the Lord has planned for you, or whether it's just the Word of God, because the Word of God itself is a sure is a sure uh, form of ministry. Uh, I'm sorry, prophecy, a sure word of prophecy. Um, don't let the enemy come after that. Don't let him come after you, your faith. He's going to try everything he's got. He's got an arsenal. Just like we have an arsenal, and our arsenal is better than his, but he is going to try and do everything he can to get you away from what God has called you to do. I can, I can say even a couple years ago, I was very close to walking away. And, you know, I really, and I knew something was wrong. That was just, that was it. I knew something was, was not right. I knew it was the enemy lying to me about the people in my life um, and even though I knew it I was still buying into it because that's how powerful the enemy can be but praise God I got myself out of it I mean and I was the only one who could get myself out of it I had to make that decision and be like 
no, I'm not going to accept these, these lies as truth because I know what the truth is. And I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be at RCF for a reason. And I'm supposed to help my pastor, you know, accomplish what God has called this church to do. And I am not going to back away. But can you imagine? I've been at this church for a long time. And even after being here so long and serving my pastor, I was still in that situation where the devil could have taken me out. That's how hard the devil tries. I'm just saying, not that I'm all, you know, whatever, but you know, I've been here a long time and you know, there was a time where I was really struggling uh, with, with just being dependable and I'm not struggling with that anymore. I hate not coming to church. That's how I am now. Um, I'm just, that, but that was, you know, I'm just giving that as an example that everybody goes through something like this uh, and don't think that because you have been in, uh, you know, you've been in service for a length of time that you're uh, not susceptible because you are and you always have to be on your guard. You always have to be on watch. You, you always have to make sure that your spirit is strengthened, that your conscience is strengthened so that your faith does not get shipwrecked because that's what happened to me. And the thing is, if you're not advancing in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is not advancing. You have a sphere of influence which you must be aware of. And the enemy is trying to keep you in some form of darkness through ignorance. Now, I wasn't ignorant because I knew something was wrong, but he does. He is he he can so easily keep somebody in ignorance and in, in darkness. And ignorance is not a bad word, okay? It just means that there is a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of understanding or comprehension. But, you know, you get knowledge you get the understanding by getting in the word or asking your pastor or asking a leader in the church hey i'm not really sure what's going on here get that understanding so that you're not ignorant um because again the enemy the devil he's trying to keep the christian in a place of darkness a place of ignorance concerning your authority concerning the power that you have as a resident of the kingdom of god concerning how you are to function in the kingdom of god he wants to keep those blinders on you um, I mean, he's got the world blinded, you know, that's, that's just a fact. He's got the world blinded. It was, it's, it's so much worse if he's got the Christian blinded. So don't be blinded. Develop your conscience, develop your spirit so that when the enemy comes against you, you'd be like, uh-uh, no, I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I have authority over your power, devil. So get off. Um, and we'll talk about the authority Two, I believe. It depends on how far a pastor wants me to go with this. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, once the believer starts functioning properly in the kingdom of God and they develop that insight needed, they start developing their conscience, they have access to the power of the kingdom. Can you imagine? You have access to the power of the kingdom. And the devil is in trouble. His rule is in trouble. But understand, 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19, it clearly shows that not every prophecy that reveals the will and plan of God for the believer will come to pass because of the inability for the believer to walk it out. They abandon, they shove aside, they reject their faith, and they reject their conscience. Oh my gosh. 1 Timothy 1, 19 says, holding faith and a good conscience, or take possession of and continue in faith and a good conscience, not letting go of or dropping either of them, or you will shipwreck your faith. Because we're talking about a kingdom of conscience. So don't abandon your conscience. Don't abandon your faith. Then he said, some have put away concerning faith and a good conscience, having become shipwrecked. It's like Gilligan's Island, man. You're shipwrecked on an island and you can't go anywhere. You don't have, you can't go anywhere. I don't want to be shipwrecked on an island. I, or, you know, I don't want to be all by myself out there uh, not having... Um, access to the kingdom of God because when your faith is shipwrecked you're not in the kingdom of God you're not functioning in the kingdom of God you're not participating in it because you've abandoned your conscience I'm sorry am I not nice I'm trying to be nice I think uh, I feel like I'm not being nice I apologize um, but anyway he is referring here Paul says you know some have put away concerning faith and a good conscience have having become shipwrecked he's referring to those that have rejected pushed, shoved aside their faith and a good conscience. Not just shoved aside their faith, but they've abandoned a good conscience because you can have a bad conscience. But we, 
as wanting to be participants in the kingdom of God, we want to have a good conscience. Yes, the word shipwreck is describing a ship that has been damaged in a battle and become inoperable, of no functioning use or destroyed. I don't know about you, but when it comes to serving God and, and doing what God wants me to do, I don't want to become inoperable. I don't want to become useless. I don't want to be destroyed. Um, we want to use those prophecies that were spoken over us and fight a good warfare because these are spiritual battles, right? It is what God is speaking to us. Whatever God has spoken to you, whether through his word or through a word, you need to hang on to that prophecy. You need to hang on to that word. Hang on to the word of God and fight. Fight against the devil because, again, uh, you have power over his power. You have authority over his power. Your power is greater because you're in the kingdom of God. Oh, that's amazing. It is very important to be able to live a spiritual life because it makes all the difference. It just takes one prophetic word to change someone, someone's life forever. And because the kingdom of God is in you and because the Holy Ghost resides within you, the kingdom of God becomes the kingdom of conscience. That simply means that the Holy Ghost can speak through your spirit. Romans 8, 16 says the spirit bears witness with our spirit. Remember, the conscience is the voice of your spirit. It's, uh, I, last week I said that, you know, folks in the, in, in the world, people who are unsaved, and, and maybe people who are saved might say, oh, that's, you know, trust your gut, that's a gut instinct. It is, but it's just, it's so much more than that because it's your spirit communicating with the Holy Spirit. It's not just a feeling. It's not just a gut instinct. It's not just common sense. It's your spirit communicating with the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. And there's, I mean, what, what you, you, you have access to understanding you have access to remembrance. You have access to, to knowledge, to, to having the Holy Spirit be your advocate, your intercessor, your strengthener, your standby. You have all of those things. Once the Holy Spirit come, is, is, is in you, when you're saved, and that now you, your spirit, can communicate with the Holy Spirit, and you have access to all of these things because you're in the kingdom of God. Acts 23, 1 says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And in Acts 24, 16, he says, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. <laughs> that's, that's the Apostle Paul talking, and toward men. These two verses combined show the importance of making the practice of attending to your conscience a priority. In Acts 23, 1, Paul urgently looked at the council and said, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. This shows that Paul, he, he, he really concentrated, he really focused, he was very aware of developing his conscience and ensuring that he lived before God with a good conscience every day. And, you know, this was just something he practiced uh, in order to, to continue to walk uprightly before God. And this practice can clearly be seen in Acts 24, 16, when he says, herein do I exercise myself. And that word exercise means to form by art, to exercise, to labor, to strive, to make painstaking efforts in order to reach or maintain a certain goal. And people, you know, when we hear the word exercise, we think, oh, you want to you know, get in shape, you want to, you know, uh, lose weight or whatever. And yes, it, it, it's physical, um, but this is a spiritual exercise because we're developing our conscience, right? So we are making painstaking efforts to ensure that we have a good conscience and we walk in a good conscience for God and men. The idea here is to create something with a tremendous amount of attention to detail. So it isn't just, you know, working out, lifting weights, you're, 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 applying yourself to something and giving that attention to detail like a sculpture or a painting but it comes with the idea that every time you do something you pay strict attention to detail and it takes determination and practice you can't just exercise your conscience for one day and be like oh okay that's it i got a good conscience no it takes practice it's it takes determination um he paul made his conscience a priority in his life in order to be sensitive to the will of God and in order to be pleasing to him. And we can't say enough about making sure that paying attention to your conscience becomes a priority. It needs to become a priority. Just like seeking uh, seeking his, his kingdom. Uh, seek first his kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. You have to seek, you have to make that developing of your conscience a priority. 
Our communication with our Heavenly Father and the Holy Ghost, it takes place in our inward man, what the scripture sometimes calls the heart of man, your spirit. The voice of our conscience is extremely important when it comes to participating in the, in the kingdom of God and functioning in the kingdom of God. Let us not forget there are natural, physical, and spiritual priorities. You know, in, in, in the natural, you know, if you do want to exercise to, to, to maintain a, a better physique, you know, it does contribute to your health and your overall quality of life. There's no doubt about that. But there's, you know, there's physical priorities. Um, you know, you may want to get a car. You may, you may need a car. You may need a house. You may need a, you know, a, you know, dwelling place. You know, every, we all need shelter. Um, and then there's spiritual priorities. You know, you, you want to grow spiritually. You know, you're tired of, of, of you know, certain thoughts, certain temptations, you know, certain, you just want to grow spiritually. You want to stop drinking the milk of the word. You start, you want to start feeding on the meat of the word. You know, that's spiritual growth. That's spiritual development. So you can have all these priorities and there's something wrong with that. But when it comes to God and what he wants for your life, that spiritual priority should be at the top of the list, right? Because again, the word says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be given unto you. Second Corinthians 1 12 says, for our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. Notice our conscience has a testimony. The testimony here reveals that Paul and his followers were rejoicing because their conscience was bearing witness with them, producing inward evidence that they lived their life in simplicity and godly sincerity, and not by condemnation or fleshly wisdom. Uh, what is fleshly wisdom, you might ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. The term fleshly wisdom conveys the idea of practicing the wisdom that proceeds from the world, because there is wisdom in the world, um, but, and while it's, there's nothing entirely wrong with it how it can be prideful it can be arrogant and self-serving and feels that it's all-knowing because you're not applying God's wisdom to your brain your wisdom and so if, if you're not careful you can elevate yourself and be like well I know better well no God knows better but that's that fleshly wisdom it comes from the world um, it leaves it, it, it can certainly leave a trail of unhappiness disappointment, frustration, you know, if you're one of those people that, you know, you, 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 you really focus on, you know, your, your wisdom, your smarts, you know, um, you could actually hurt a lot of people with that. Um, you could affect a lot of people negatively because of your fleshly wisdom and, and not having God's wisdom on the matter. Um, so allow your conscience, which is the voice of your spirit, that has the potential to constantly hear and be affected by the Holy Ghost to be a priority in your life. If our views are tainted with anger, frustration, or you know strong disappointment, that should be an alarm to us because these are fleshly attributes. They're not godly. You know, we sh we shouldn't be anger, angry, or frustrated or disappointed. Um, it's important for us to eliminate these attributes and be more sensitive to the Spirit of God that resides within us so that we will function in godly wisdom. Because again, we're talking about functioning in the kingdom of God. But this will produce greater results. I'm ending here. Allow the power of the word to influence people in your life, not through the intimidation of the flesh, through you know self-nature or fleshly wisdom. So that's it for the kingdom of conscience. This really, I really did enjoy this section. Next week, we'll examine the enemies of the kingdom and their methods and habits so that we are not caught off guard. Because I talked about that. Don't be caught off guard. Don't let your faith get shipwrecked. And now, next week, we're going to talk about how that happens. So anyway, love you guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, section on kingdom of conscience. We will see you next week.